You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, and this is Season 1, Episode 1, an inside look into the life of a virtual assistant. So welcome back, everyone, to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, and we've had a bit of a change. Most of you, if you're keeping up with the show, you'll notice that I haven't put out a podcast in about three or four weeks. And the reason for that is that I, as well as my virtual team, has built a new business, a new digital business that we're really proud of. It's called Liberty Virtual Assistance. You can find us at libertyvas.com. And unfortunately, there's only so many hours in the day, and I didn't have the time to put out podcasts while I was building this business, creating the systems, learning from my first clients, and it's it's really, really amazing experience. So we're back now, and this is going to be season one, working with a virtual assistant. I'd like to introduce Cherry Lou from Liberty Entrepreneurs. Hi, Ash. How are you doing? Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah. So, Cherry, just, you know, the purpose of this podcast series is to help our listeners and, and fellow entrepreneurs and hopefully even fellow uh, virtual assistants just get an inside look on what it's like to work with the virtual staff. You know, what I'm finding as we're building this business is that most people, it's, it's so strange to them. It's still so different to work mm. with a virtual staff. And for us, it just seems pretty, pretty normal. And so the goal of these podcast series, this season one is to try to help people like take a look inside the box, if you will, and just see what it's like to work with a virtual assistant, see what type of communication you and I have, see what types of problems come up or mm -hmm. what our accomplishments are and just learning from you what a virtual assistant is, what the life of a virtual assistant is, how you got interested in, in working in a home-based job like this, and, you know, just trying to, trying to clear up some of that muddy water for people so they're not as yeah. scared taking that jump and adding someone to their team. So, Sherry, could you just give us a quick background of, of who you are and where you live and the things that you're passionate about? Sure. Um, I'd be happy to share some of my experiences. So that will help my um, co-VAs and their other clients as well who's interested to get a VA. So again, my name is Cherry and I'm from the Philippines, um, specifically in Davao City. That's in the southern part of the Philippines. Uh, I finished four years in college in one of the university here in Davao, where I took up BS in computer science. And my first job was not really related with my course because during that time, it's really kind of difficult to find a job here in the Philippines that's uh, connected with your bachelor's degree. So I, I applied in a call center. So that was way back in 2008. So my first job was a technical chat support representative. And then I was transitioned into a technical support um, agent in AT&T. I've been working there for three years. And I was transitioned into a billing consultant. So let's talk about what a technical support representative or a chat representative is like whenever you were working your first job and then you got promoted, what was that like? What was your, what was your day like then you come into work and like what type of tasks? Um, normally I come into work, like it's really graveyard. Uh, we do graveyard here in the Philippines because if it's morning in in U S time, so we need to like log in around 10 PM or 11 PM. So we're covering the in like entire U.S. So we have different time zones. It really depends if who's going to call us, if it's from, you know, the central part or eastern part. So it depends. But normally the schedule that we have is graveyard, um, like 12 midnight and around in, until in the morning, like 8 o'clock in the morning. When I was a chat support representative, my shift started at like around 7 p.m., and what did it mean to be a chat support representative? What, like what types of questions were you answering or what types of clients were you working with? And what were the, what were the working conditions? Were you in little booths or were you working from home or did, mm. did you have to travel into an office? I have to travel into an office like an hour or two to get to an office. And if it's like a little bit of a challenge, because number one, 
I don't have my own car, so I have to commute, and then I have to ride a jeepney, and it's kind of a little scary because, you know, you go out, out and then that's kind of late already, and like right. around 11 p.m., you got to tra travel because you have to um, be there like 30 minutes before your shift. That's the company's policy. And then what I normally do is a technical support representative is, of course, I, I answer their questions or help them figure out uh, or resolve their problem about like, for example, they can't take calls and their internet is not working. So we're really like giving a step-by-step -step process um, to the clients or to the customers and then making sure that, you know, overall they're 100% um, very satisfied with the service. Right. So, so, ba so basically, if I had problems with my AT&T service and I call their hotline, you might have been the person on the other <laughs> phone picking up and trying to help me. I think so. Three, uh, five years ago. Um, right. yeah, I can't even remember. Uh, I've, I've had like 30 calls in a day, sometimes 15, if most of the calls are like an, for an hour, because there are like some technical issues or technical concern that's really um you know, uh, very difficult to resolve. And then there are customers who don't want any technicians, so they don't want anyone to, you know, come to their house and then fix their stuff for them. They wanted to do it themselves. So that's why they have to call our hotline. And then we, of course, as a technical support center, you have to be very patient and you have to give um, all the support that you could give to this person. At first, it right. was really kind of challenging because it's, you know, it's my first job. And then people on the other line is going to shout at you and going to curse you sometimes. But we've been through so much, so many trainings before we actually pass the, um, or before we actually got hired. So, uh, which is really helpful. Yeah. Let's talk about that. What, so you're working for AT&T a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and, and, is this called the BPO industry? Yes. That's the BPO industry. That's the business process outsourcing industry. That's really okay, like right. a boom business here in the Philippines. So a lot of young Filipinos, are we talking like twenties and thirties are working in this BPO industry? Twenties to forties actually. So yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Twenties <laughs> to forties. And so the call center and the BPO industry is still one of the main employers in the Philippines currently. Exactly. It started way back 2008, actually earlier than that, but it got bigger and bigger around 2008, 2009. So there are like so many clients and different accounts just coming in the Philippines. And then there, there are different companies like from the company that I'm working with, it's called, uh, the company name is Sutherland. The owner of this company is actually from India. And then he outsourced the business in the Philippines. And then they're the one who's actually the middle person between Filipino employees and AT&T clients. So. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, they're the ones that contract you. Yes. They're the ones that contract us. So what is it like whenever you're traveling, you know, you got to travel an hour or two uh, on a bus or something to get into the office. And then of course, let's not forget, you have to travel an hour or two back home mm. at the end of the day. So that's, that's already two, three, or maybe four hours of your day that you're spending yeah. doing this job. I don't assume that they're paying you for that time. They don't. <laughs> no work, right. no pay. So basically whenever the time that you log in, that's the only time that you're paid for it. And um, we don't have any transportation allowance or anything like that. Uh, it's really like the one that you've signed for, the exact amount, that's really what you're getting in the end of the month, minus all of the benefits and the taxes and all that. So the right. feeling is really kind of, mm, this is very unfair, you know, because you've been really mm. been working, you wanted to work hard. The challenge that I could find there is that really traveling, you have to wake up in the middle of the night because you have a shift. There's customers waiting for you. So instead of feeling blessed or feeling happy that you have a job, sometimes you really have to drag yourself out of bed and then you got to look at the mirror and saying, oh my God, I have to work again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So w what is it like graduating from college with a tech, with a technical uh, type of degree, yeah. but then not being able to really use that degree exactly. once you graduate? Exactly. Um, what is that like? Well, self pity is one of the thing, like I don't feel confident. To be honest, at first, <laughs> like when people ask me, what's my job? Like, because um, it's not that I'm looking down the industry because I started there. I actually owe them a lot, you know, 
um, it's where everything started before I become, became a VA. I've learned so many things um, personally and on my career in a call center industry. It's just that um, during the time I was, I was young and I just started my career and I don't feel satisfied with what I'm doing because you've been doing everything over and over again, like for three straight years. And then right, the same type of task, <laughs> same type of task. Like whenever somebody calls, I know this person is going to call me that the TV is not working. And then the next call, I'm pretty sure this person is calling me because the internet is not working because there's something right. wrong in the central part. So there's storm or something. So we already know um, about what's going to happen. So the excitement is not there anymore. And in the end of the day, you don't feel that super productive. There mm -hmm. could be some other people who feel like it's okay because I'm earning, but you know, for me, it's it's not that because, yeah, you're right. I finished college and then my mom has actually been working so hard for me to finish college. And then I just had this kind of job during that time. That's what I felt during that time. So I was not really satisfied with what I'm doing. So I jumped in into a different company. Unfortunately, it's still a call center. So it sounds like you're starting to get bored with it. <laughs> yes, for three years. And then. I transferred to a different account, like a different company who handles a different account. I'm sure ladies from the United States knows this account. It's called Just Fab. So it's like women's shoes and bags. So I'm one of the fashion consultants in Just Fab. So ladies who are listening that, there, I'm sure like probably <laughs> I've had a chance to speak to you before. <laughs> all, all 10 of the females that listen to the Liberty <laughs> Entrepreneurs podcast, this one's for you. <laughs> All right, Cherry, so you started getting bored with AT&T and the mundane tasks in the call center. You knew somebody's coming in and hmm. got a t TV problem or an internet problem. What, what was it that finally told you, I want to quit doing this call center job with AT&T and go try to find another client? And, and, ju and just for my listeners to understand, hmm. a, a virtual assistant, if you hire a virtual assistant, they consider you their client, mm -hmm. yes. right? You, you, you consider them a part of your team and they are part of your team. Absolutely. You consider them maybe your assistant or your staff member, but they see you as their client. So I hope that really gets the psychological playing field leveled up a little bit for anyone who's interested in hiring a virtual assistant. You're not hiring someone just to throw all your crap tasks on because you think that they're your assistant. They see you as their client. And although it may be your first time hiring a virtual assistant, this is not their first time having a client to work for. Okay. I just want to throw that caveat out <laughs> there to set the, to set the stage here, Cherry. Uh -huh. So you've left, you've <clears throat> left AT&T, you got bored with it. Where did you go? Uh, I transferred to a different company. It's called, um, offsourcing and then their office is in New York and then they're connected with just fab. I'm a fashion consultant. Normally ladies are calling us or sometimes men are calling us because they wanted to send a gift to their girlfriend or, you know, I like the job. The reason why I jumped in from, from AT&T into a different account in a different company is number one, of course, I want a new thing that will happen to my life. Like I wanted to change during the time. And I can still remember that was like end of the 2012. So before I hit 2012, oh no, that was end of 2011. So I was thinking before I hit 2012, I need to have a new job. I need to have a new environment. I need to have a new boss. <laughs> mm -hmm. So those crazy things that's running in my mind. So fashion consultancy is like kind of new thing for me. And I'm really into fashion as well. So, and I love shoes. I love bags. So much of lady stuff, you know. <laughs> so what was it like whenever, so like who would, who would call you and who would like seek your fashion advice or what was this mm. job like? Well, it's not really just all about fashion. It's like about billing support, um, return goods. You're going to take care of that. And then some of the clients are like tracking their orders. So it's all around thing that we do. So there are, um, clients who are calling us to know where their orders are or if their order is still not that um, is, is not correct. They need to return the goods or something. They need to exchange it to a different product or sometimes they're not happy because they've been billed twice <laughs> or, you know, right. then there's a refund, sure. there's a refund that needs to be processed. And then, um, 
yeah, that's it. That's what I've been doing. And then sometimes there are ladies who actually need some suggestion. Uh, what type of bag goes with their stiletto shoes, their red stilettos. So uh, you can actually give them some kind of... Um, what company is this? Do they have a website? Oh, the fashion company? It's just fab. Just fab.com. Cool. All right. And and what did you what did you find that you were able to learn in your first call center job that helped you in the uh, just fab job? Well, I think it builds my confidence. That's just one thing because I'm really confident to speak with, you know, the the English language. This is not our native language, so it's our second language here in the Philippines. And then after like you know, uh, months of training, and then after three years that I've been talking to Americans, and from from different regions in in U.S. or different states in the U.S., um, I was able to like you know understand them and slowly understand the tra their tradition and all those stuff. So it's it's kind of different if you've been from different call center and then you transfer into a different call center, even if there's different account, you're still dealing with almost same clients. Right. Okay. So it really doesn't matter if you're going from a call center job to a call center job because most of the clients are going to be pretty similar, especially if it's an American based call center, yeah. you're going to be speaking English to people from, you know, around the United States and it's a big country and different people have different accents. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a Southern accent, which is going to be much different than say like a, a New York or New Jersey accent. But, you know, I'm really curious is learning English something that Filipino children get in school or when do they start learning English and, and do they go into like uh, in the States, we start school at five years old and you know, we don't learn a foreign language for a very long time. So what is it like for Filipino children? Um, it's actually the same. We start school around four or five. So it, it depends on in the process in every school. So if there are some that actually started four years old. And then from my experience, uh, we've already been taught English language is already a part of our, well, as early as four years old, children here are actually learning English because that's really a part of our curriculum. So as soon as we start school, um, teachers are teaching the kids to speak in English, uh, writing in English. So that's why, you know, it's really a big plus if you are someone from the Philippines because we already know the language and understand the language and knows how to use it. But most Filipinos are not confident to talk in English. So right. that's just probably uh, the negative part there. Even though we understand the language and we know how to write it, but you're not confident in, in speaking the language. That's still, you know, an, a very important thing that right. I think. So in order for you to become yeah, an effective communicator. It's great, though, that Filipinos are, are introduced to English at such an early language. I, I imagine that that's not entirely uncommon in asia i've never been yet mm. hopefully soon <laughs> um, but this is one of the reasons that we choose filipino virtual assistants is because not only are they taught english from a very early age but there is a large bpo and call center um, culture in the yeah. philippines like like you were talking about and I, I think you know i've got a lot of customer support background and one thing that i learned is it really doesn't matter what you know as long as you can communicate. Yes. So for a virtual assistant, as long as you can communicate eff effectively in English, you're going to be able to understand what your client wants and be able to learn those skills. Mm -hmm. Now I'll speak to my entrepreneurial clients. You know, um, as long as you're able to communicate with your virtual assistant, I wouldn't really worry if they don't have the skills right now that you need. Because if you find someone that has technical skills or has administrative skills, like a foundation of those skill sets, and you're able to speak to them very clearly and, you know, very bluntly, and you're a good manager and you're, you know, you're the good entrepreneur and you can communicate the ideas that you have, then a virtual assistant is going to help you get so much more work done mm -hmm. in your, in your day to day. So you can zoom out and start working on your business, you know. Jerry, I think I'd like to leave it right here for now. I think we did a great job. Thank you for sharing your experience in the BPO industry. Uh, you know, thanks for introducing yourself mm -hmm. to the Liberty Entrepreneurs audience. And uh, this is just one of our first episodes of our first season at Liberty Entrepreneurs. 
working with a virtual assistant. It's so exciting, Cherry. We're going to have you back on the show in about a week or so so that we can just give people a little peek, a little insight on what it's like to be a virtual assistant, what it's like to hire a virtual assistant, and what it's like to work in a remote team. Before I let you go, Cherry, I know your English is really good, and some people may not think that English is your second language. Can you... Can you say something in your in your native tongue like, <laughs> hi, good morning, how are you doing? Or thanks for having me on Liberty Entrepreneurs. Sure, no problem. Uh, salamat sa mga naminaw and maayong buntag sa inyong tanan o i-enjoy lang inyong coffee. <laughs> okay, Cherry, <laughs> tell us what you said. I just said thank you so much for listening and good morning to everyone and I hope you enjoy your coffee. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Cherry, for joining the show today. We'll have you back on. Yeah, you're very welcome. We're also going to release an episode with another virtual team member on Team Liberty, Dexter. A lot of you will be familiar. I've talked about him a couple times on the podcast. He helps me edit Liberty Entrepreneurs, and he helps me run some emails, and he does our workflows. It's just an amazing guy, amazing virtual assistant. Both of you guys are entrepreneurs because you see your skill sets, and you're going out there trying to find clients to sell what you can, and I think it's really beautiful. This is going to be an amazing season one cherry i'm super excited we just have to make sure and keep building our business in the background all right okay all right cherry thank you so much have a great day thank you ash have a good one too all right thanks again for listening to season one episode one an inside look into the life of a virtual assistant remember this is the first season of liberty entrepreneurs this season is called how to work with a virtual assistant and I hope to answer a lot of your questions and just clear up some of the confusion that so many people have come to me with regarding how to hire and train and work with a virtual assistant. Don't miss an episode by subscribing at libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash season and the number one. That's going to be your home base for this entire season of podcasts and interviews and I'm expecting about 10 episodes in total. If you have an extra 60 seconds, reviews for the show help more than you can imagine. So you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, SoundCloud, all the major outlets. If you want to help out with a review, check the show notes. We've listed all of the direct links to all the platforms. Until next time, you know what to do. Keep building freedom. Out.